What is going on everyone? Welcome to your 8th programming tutorial in how to make games in Java. And in this tutorial we're going to be talking about animation. Now we already learned how to load images and now that we have those images we can begin animating them. So the first thing we're going to do is kind of static anim animation, not really like uh, moving things around on the screen, but taking a single image and animating it depending on different ways that the image looks. So for example, if I want to animate this face so it looked like a guy had his eyes open to a guy had his eyes closed um, I would need to do some simple animation in Java so here are my two faces eyes open and eyes closed and we're gonna be swapping these images real quick to give the appearance of animation so they're pretty much two different types of animation this is called well I call it still animation in the other animation where like if a ball was moving around on the screen that's what I call dynamic animation I don't know what they call it but you know so let's go ahead and get started because once I teach you the basics of this animation the next one is going to seem a lot easier so the first thing you need to do is import images so we can actually use those images and import something called an array list and if you don't know what an array list is it's pretty much an array but you can um, like add and delete elements a lot easier so let's go ahead and put well let's utilize that first private array list and I'm gonna name mine scenes scenes just like that so now we have pretty much an array list uh, called scenes and what a scene is gonna be is it's pretty much a picture every picture is a scene so when that guy has his eyes open that's a scene when he has his eyes closed that's another scene so bam that's all that is so the, now you know and what we need to do after this is make private int oh, name it. scene index now each element in your array list has an index that's just like an array pretty much so in pretty much these are going to be the elements in this array list right here so simple enough easy enough so far and now what we need is variables for two times private long movie time and if you couldn't guess this is going to be the actual time of your animation we're going to keep track in this variable how long your animation has been running and this is so we can test it against you know other stuff but this is pretty much going to be the total time that your animation has been running or your movie and now let's go ahead and make private long total time and this is just going to keep track of the total amount of time that's allowed your animation to play. And why do we need two different movie times? Because we're going to be comparing these. Pretty much what we're going to be seeing, all right, if this movie time exceeds the total time, then we want our animation to start again. And we just don't want it to freeze. So that's why we need the two different variables right there. So now that we got a bunch of variables, let's go ahead and, well, let's go ahead and make our constructor first. So I'm going to name it private and whatever you name my class animation and let's go ahead and build constructor and make sure I spell that right yep and the first thing we're gonna want to do since this constructor is gonna be called as soon as we create our class or object let's go ahead and just reset everything to zero so put scenes remember this array list right here we'll set this equal to a new array list and this just to make sure if we had one before we're starting everything afresh so we're creating a brand new one and take that total time and set this equal to zero to begin with because right now we didn't do anything to it we're going to be doing it later on and now after all that after you set everything to zero or create it new we're going to call a method called start later on so this sets everything to zero and this method later on is going to start our animation and i know we didn't create it yet but bear with me and let me just add a comment right here just because I usually add a comment constructor I probably spelled it wrong but too bad I just like to add a little comment above each of my methods not only to tell me what they do in case I forget but also when you're scrolling down your code and you have a bunch of methods you can easily see where the methods are so you know just a nice little coding tip right there and after this let's go ahead and make a method to add a scene to the animation so what we're going to do is name public synchronized and what synchronized means in Java is 
you can only run this method at a time. So if we had a thread that was able to run two methods at once, um, we would only want to run this one, and then when this is done, we can run the other one instead of running at the same time. And if you're like, all right, Bucky, why would you not want to run two methods at the same time? It's stupid. You're making your program go slower. Well, sometimes it's necessary, and this is because if you have two methods that, like, changed a number or changed variable then when one method ran and the other method ran at the same time then you might have the output change variable in two different ways one would set the number equal to five and one would set the number equal to fifteen so if you have them synchronized then you always know that they're gonna wait for the other one then you have better control over your program you'll see later on but uh... just name this method add scene and this is gonna take two parameters now we need two different um, pieces of information to add a scene to our animation or movie. We need an image to add because, you know, what face do you want to add? Eyes closed or eyes open? And now you need a time. So once you say, all right, I'm going to add this image, the time is how long do you want the image to appear on that screen? One second, one hour. So for my first one, I'd put something like add scene face one since that's the name of my face with my eyes open and I'll put something like 0 0.2 seconds so bam and now let's go ahead and change that total time variable so total time plus equals T and why am I doing this every time I add a scene to total time this total time is going to be pretty much be the sum of all the individual scenes so if I have three scenes for a second each this total time is three seconds so now we know our animation is only supposed to be three seconds long and that way we can compare other times to it and that way we have something steady to compare and now what I need to do is now that I got that total time I actually need to add well you'll see scenes and this is pretty much remember the array list we created out here we need to add an object to the scenes array list. Now let's go ahead and add that first argument. So what do we want to add to this special array list called scenes? Well we're going to be creating each scene is going to be its own object. We're going to be creating a whole different class in specifically to store these scenes. And I'm just going to name it one scene because each object is going to be only one scene. Um, so again one more time each picture in essence is going to be an object aka a scene so this we're going to build a constructor in this that takes two parameters the image itself what picture do you want to put and the total time so now with that remember we're going to build um, a class called one scene later on and this constructor is going to take the image and the total time and we're going to be doing some stuff to it but for right now every time you call this method add scene it's going to change the total time to the appropriate amount and it's also going to add a new element to the scenes array list so if i had three pictures in here this scenes array list would have three elements in it and also it would create a new object and this is just so we can use it later on but for now let's just go ahead and add my comment um, add scene to array list and set time for each scene so now that we got that set and I'll change that to I we're ready to move on to my next tutorial but for now that's all you get for this tutorial but I just want to thank you guys for watching don't forget to subscribe I'm having an awesome time doing this can't wait to teach you some more so again thank you don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next tutorial